Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, I'm Zach Friedman, and welcome to Void Star Lab, my hardware hacking workshop. I hope you guys are all masked up, safe, sound, and coronavirus free. I got the lab to myself today, so I think it's safe to take this off. In one of my last videos, I took apart a P5 data glove and uh, hacked it and tweaked it. I promised to make my own version, and after only four and a half short years, that day has finally come. Introducing Somatic, my wearable AI-enabled gesture-sensing, handwriting-recognizing controller for all manner of wearable computers. It's so rad. When I draw letters in midair, the Somatic glove reads my handwriting and types it into the heads-up display. The secret is the artificial neural network that runs right on the glove. It takes orientation data from three sensors and crunches it to figure out where I'm pointing and what position my fingers are in. While I'm wearing the glove, I'm the keyboard, and I'm the mouse. It lets me use the wearable computer all the time, even in situations where voice control isn't appropriate. It's the way a wearable should work. It's unobtrusive, it's useful, and cyberpunk is f Controlling wearable computers is like the hardest user experience challenge of all. In order for a wearable computer to be useful, it's got to be available all the time. You got your tools, your communication, your information right in front of you all the time as if it were a part of your own body. Uh, whatever control devices you use have to be available all the time. That's really hard on its own, but you add in the fact that a wearable display is a virtual display. There's no touch screen to touch, and you know there's no flat surface to put your keyboard and mouse. Our technology is built around text and pointing, so the input device needs to be super precise. You gotta search those pages, hit reply on that email, and even image-based apps like Instagram need you to type emoji, comments, and hashtags. What you need is a wearable keyboard. This is a Twiddler, a small one-handed keyboard. It's wearable because I, I put a belt clip on it. This thing was used as the input device for a lot of classic old-school wearable computers. Uh, that's that's Lady Ada of Adafruit, by the way, uh, back in MIT. I don't know how they use this because it is a colossal pain in the ass. The Twiddler has 12 buttons on the front, and you hold down different combinations of buttons to type different keystrokes. All the keys on a standard keyboard, including the hashes and curly braces and backtick and windows keys and number pad plus sign, they all have some combination of keys that represent them. It's called a chord, and you need to remember like a hundred of them and contort your fingers like you're playing a guitar in order to type. The worst part is that while a computer is always available, a Twiddler is not. You either have to, A, pull it out of your pocket every time you want to use it, in which case, why not just ditch the headgear and pull out a phone instead? Uh, I didn't want to throw my phone. I don't have the balls. B, you need to carry it around in your hand all the time like a chump. I don't want to tie up a hand all day carrying around a twiddler. I also need this hand. This is my second favorite hand. Instead, I decided to turn my hand into the keyboard. Seamless transition. This isn't a new idea. Data gloves have been in fiction like forever. Come on, let me in! But this is not like a real use case tech demo. This is just movie magic. If you had to use computers like that all day, every day, your arms would be just killing by the end of the workday. It's no wonder that both of these guys are hooked on futuristic super drugs. I want a $10,000 a night hooker! There have also been real life mass produced data gloves like this P5. The problem with devices like this is that they're intended to reproduce your hand in 3D space. Not only is this complete overkill for, you know, dealing with an Android face tablet, but it makes the glove awkward, heavy, and just, just not fun to wear all day. I built this thing not for jacking into the matrix, but for, you know, typing and mousing on a wearable computer. The somatic glove is in two parts. You have the finger section, and you have the wristband with all the electronics. Right here above my index finger is an IMU. That's an inertial motion unit, or inertial measurement unit. It has an accelerometer, a compass, and a gyroscope, which all measure different types of positioning. The first joint of each finger contains a small neodymium magnet, and each knuckle has a Hall effect sensor. This lets the glove track which fingers are curled up and which ones are straight. The neat part is it does so without putting up any resistance. Flex sensors like those in the Power Glove and the P5 are really stiff. 
They make bending your fingers harder, they're just awkward, and they generally get in the way. Modern versions like this one are thinner and lighter, but they still put up a little resistance and they're enough to make me feel like I have arthritis. The only physical connection here is that thin fabric. I decided to sense nothing but the knuckle joint in each finger, and I don't sense the thumb at all. There's literally nothing connecting the magnet to the hall sensor except for this thin fabric. If I wanted to add more sensors, uh, I'd need to run wires down my fingers, which would, you know, make the gloves stiff and awkward and just a general pain in the butt. Remember, I'm not trying to reproduce my hand in 3D space. The purpose of these is just to tell it what mode it needs to be in. I do that with these Naruto hand signs. Uh, this one is the mouse, click, click, click. Uh, this one is the keyboard. This does a little scrolling, uh, and I power up the device by gripping and shut it off by releasing. The wrist strap has the brains and the batteries. Everything you see is 3D printed. Uh, even the straps are 3D printed flexible TPU. The outside I think looks really cool. I, I really try to make it look slick. But I'm going to warn you, the electronics on the inside are really, really ugly. The Somatic has a 340 milliamp hour battery and a charge controller to charge it up right there in the glove. Uh, this Bluetooth module acts as a keyboard and mouse. Over here is the vibrating motor for haptic feedback. Uh, everything left is really just a piece of strip board that connects the sensors coming off the fingers uh, into the correct pins of the microcontroller. But let's talk about that microcontroller. This is Le Piste de Résistance, the Teensy 4.0. This little bastard chugs along at a stupefying 600 megahertz. Uh, I underclock it to 150 megahertz and it still slaps. This thing can process a gesture with my shoddy, unoptimized code, and it can run it through that six layer, 600 node TensorFlow model in less than 10 milliseconds. Whoa, 10 milliseconds, TensorFlow, 600 nodes, what? Believe it, this is what people who are trying to scam money out of venture capitalists call machine learning on the edge. See, it takes a lot of resources to train the neural network, but it doesn't take nearly as much to run it. Here's what goes in, a database of over 10,000 handwriting samples that I personally painstakingly built over hours and hours of wrist-destroying training. I used TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers to smush this bad boy into an adorable baby version that fits on the Teensy, runs really fast, and it works almost as well. The output of the script is, and I shit you not, a C++ object declaration that I copy and paste into my Arduino sketch. It takes up a mere 20% of my program memory and 80% of my RAM, but it lets me run machine learning on a glove. The result is I can draw in midair using my regular handwriting, and it sends it straight to my wearable computer du jour. If I'm in public, I can make the gestures small and stealthy, and if not, I can make them big and flashy. As I use and train the system, it'll get more accurate and more full-featured. It uses Bluetooth for its communication, which means that I can pair this thing with literally anything, from a laptop to a Google Glass, to this thing, to an obsolete military-grade head-mounted display that I bought for $70 on eBay. All of this, and I still make it look good. Thanks for being interested in my project and for watching my video. Uh, this project was a total blast to make and I learned a ton. This is my first project involving machine learning and I think it came out really well. If you'd like to make your own somatic, then Godspeed, sir or madame. All of the 3D models and the firmware and even the pre-trained neural network is all uh, on my GitHub and there's a set of assembly instructions on Instructables. Links for both of those are in the description. Uh, the next video, which I promised to release before 2024, I'm going to dive deep and teach you how to cram a neural network into your Arduino. If you're into that, feel free to, you know, hit that little button. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.